everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm really excited to introduce to you some terms and techniques that I think every artist needs to know, especially beginners, when it comes to acrylic paint. These are fundamental techniques that are a lot of fun, and I promise if you practice, you can totally master these at home, even if you're a beginner. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back, and let's learn some acrylic techniques. The first awesome acrylic technique I want to show you is blending using two brushes. You probably tried blending wet and wet, but one of the things that can help blending is if you have a couple brushes. Now, these are soft brushes. These are uh, domed blenders, and I'm going to come here and paint out some nice pink paint, and then I'll get some yellow going here, let it go orange. That's a pretty hard line, but what you can do is you can take a dry brush and blend those two together to create a softer transition. So that's another way to get there. The next uh, painting process I wanna share with you is scumbling, which is basically the cousin of dry brushing. It's a lot of fun. I will start with a blue this time. And scumbling is a scratching, circular motion. It is lots of pressure. The brush is dry. Useful when you've got to kind of apply thin coats of paint and you want a diffused, non-direct, and light application. Stippling, fantastic technique used a lot in acrylic painting. Sounds kind of intense, but basically means tapping up and down. You just take a brush, you don't use a lot of pressure, there's not a lot of water, and it's just the act of taking the brush up and down and making a nice diffused area of paint. The fun technique after that is one of my favorites. It's kind of like glazing, but it's glazing leveled up. It's called grisaille. I'm saying that kind of crazy and fancy, but it's grisaille and it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to use my pink paint here because it's already transparent and I'm gonna use a glazing medium. This is something to help my paint be even more transparent. And grisaille is when you paint something out black and white. And then you take thin films of color over the top of it, leaving the black and white picture showing underneath. And it creates a colored version, kind of like when they used to color uh, black and white movies. If any of you remember those when they came out with the colorized movies. And that's a really fun technique to do. And if you're better at value studies and have trouble with color mixing, Grisaille might be a really good technique for you. The next technique I want to talk about is a wash. Now, a wash is kind of a controversial technique in acrylic, and that is because of something called underbinding. A wash is very watery. It's where you have a lot of water in the paint, and it's very watery, as you see here. If you do it into paper, it's completely stable. If you do it on canvas, you have to allow it to cure for quite a long time, or you may have problems with your paint called underbinding. Um, generally let it go for a few weeks and you can stabilize it with some varnish if you cho choose to do that technique. It's one that I really like. The next technique that I'm going to do is arabesque strokes. Now, arabesque strokes often throw off uh, my community. I'll use a couple colors here for fun, but they're really wonderful and they're very, very almost like a writing. And these are strokes that have strong curves and a calligraphy feel to them. Would be a nice that. The next one that you wanna be able to master are S-curve strokes. They are exactly what you might think. These strokes are used for all kinds of organic painting. The next technique that you definitely, definitely want to master is the double load. Now you might've heard of this referred to as one stroke, but this is a really old decorative painting method. And basically all it is, is you take a floating medium or glazing medium, right? 
I'm going to load this into the brush and you load two colors of paint onto your brush at the same time, working them in. And then when you come to your surface, those two brush strokes create patterns that finish the whole project right there in one stroke. So like I can have a stem and that stem will have a highlight and a shadow right there. And the other way that you can double load a brush is you can take two or three paints even at the same time. These are all right here on this brush. And we're going to simply use the stroke to reveal all the colors of the paint. So I'd like to show you pouncing over here on my left side of the surface. Pouncing is important because it's used in stenciling and other applications. It's generally done with a tool like this. And I will show you the two ways that you pounce and stencil. You can see that I'm loading up my stencil by putting it into the paint and twirling. The first way that you can do this is to kind of stipple up and down with your sponge. And the next way is to twirl. So those are those two techniques. You'll see these used in a lot of projects. After that, you want to be able to do the sponge. Now, I like a sea sponge. You could use a craft sponge or any sponge you want. I'll take two colors of paint here since they're so nicely loaded out. And all you do with that is dab up and down. You can see that that leaves a beautiful sponging type of technique. You might have heard of palette knives and artist knives. And these are used in something called impasto. Now you can do impasto with a brush, but it's best done with a palette knife. And it's a really fun word. Let's say together, impasto. And what it means is thick. It's thick applications of paint. I like heavy bodied paint for this the best. You can see I come here and I load my artist knife here and I can come off. And when I do it this way, you'll notice that the application of paint is very thick and you see all of the body and everything there really holding up and staying there. Now, I would like to come here and show you another of some of my favorite, favorite kinds of techniques. And one of them will use the artist knife again. So I'll clean that off a little bit. And we're going to paint a thick color right here. Thick, thick, thick. Maybe I'll even get into the pink here. See how thick that is? And get some white into it. Lots of interesting colors, right? This is scraffito. Another one of my favorite words, but basically all it means is to scrape or remove paint. So generally you do this with a dry color or a dry area underneath. You apply wet paint and you remove it with a sharp surface. Any surface kind of sharp tool will do. I like artist knives, but you can use toothpicks or brushes or all kinds of things. Another technique that you're gonna see all the time is splatter. Now I'm gonna use my splattering tool here. And all that basically is, is where you have a fluid paint and you use a tool to flick out little splatter particulates in to your surface. You can see that that went everywhere and that gives you nice stuff. That's used in stars and uh, different types of galaxy techniques. It's a lot of fun. It is messy. So that's a technique that you definitely, definitely want to make a plan for. The next thing I want to just really quickly talk to you about, because I get asked about it all the time, is gesso. People ask me all the time, do I need to gesso and how do I gesso? The first thing I want to tell you is gesso is not a sealant. It's not like kills. It's not a, a varnish. It is a surface preparation. It's an acrylic polymer with a lot of pigment. 
and uh, ground marble dust or different products for grit. It is not made with glue or other weird products. It is made by the art companies and it's very similar uh, in its chemistry to paint, but it's a bit chalky and that lets your paint apply and it gives you tooth. When you're applying it, all you would do is put out, brush out a thin coat on your surface. You do not have to gesso these pre-gessoed canvases. That is an option. It's just a surface preparation. Allow these coats to dry in between. And remember, if you put a dirty brush from dirty water in your gesso, your gesso can mold, so keep your gesso clean. The last thing that I get asked about all the time is varnish. And I have a little varnish here. So here's some things to think about on varnish. And this is the last word in that. Read the instructions two, three times. Make sure you understand them thoroughly. Do not varnish in extreme weather. Do not varnish in a room full of dust and pet hair. And don't go over semi-dry varnish again and again. It's better to put out a thin coat, allow it to completely dry. And if you see an area that you missed, once it's dry and cured, go back with another coat. But again, always read the can. This is a brush on varnish. I'm going to load a soft brush. Varnish does a couple of things. You don't have to varnish your surface. And I'll let you compare there. Varnish deepens color so that it unifies that and deepens that color. Varnish seals and protects. It prevents fading, but it is not necessary for acrylic paint. So it's something you might do if you're like, oh, I don't like all these different finishes, but you don't have to do it to finish your piece, okay? It's just an optional thing that you can do. So after we looked at this dry, we realized that the angle wasn't really showing you what varnish did, and I wanted to make sure that you had an appreciation for it as a tool. Now again, I can't stress to you enough that it's not necessary. You can see the difference between the two colors, and I'm gonna go from even the white onto the black because I want you to see how that deepens and strengthens colors. And if we can see that from overhead, you get a sense of what varnish does. So it makes those colors more rich, it unifies the finish, and it protects from UV light. So I hope that you enjoyed being introduced to these really important art concepts in acrylic. I think these are things that everybody needs to know about as they go forward in their painting process and it'll make things a lot easier for you as you paint. Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you in an easel really soon.